Howdy, folks. So today I have uh, an Anchor Power Bank. This is the PowerCore 20100. It's kind of an odd name, but they uh, they use that to symbolize that it's 20,100 milliamp hours. They should just say 20.1 amp hours, but of course that's a bigger number and uh, marketing likes that. Uh, anyway, this is actually a really decent power bank. This is, of course, not their current model. This is uh, still made, of course, uh, but uh, they have the PowerCore Plus and all sorts of stuff like that. But the reason why I like this is because it's relatively cheap now, uh, given the fact that they've got other stuff out with USB-C and all this other stuff that I really don't need. This is a, a very big power bank, of course. And uh, the, the, of course, the, the 20.1 amp hours is the rating of the cells inside, not actually the power you get out, because there's going to, of course, going to be losses in the DC to DC converter in this thing. But uh, overall, I really like this for the price. Uh, it's it's quite cheap, but the build quality feels good. The plastic is 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 very nice. Um, I, I I like I just like the styling of it. Uh, it, it feels nice. It comes with um, you know comes with a, a nice cable, and uh, comes with a actually a pretty decent pouch actually. It's sort of just like a no bullshit um, uh, power bank, and I mean it takes like ten hours to charge, and it it really does have uh, the capacity they say it does, um, you know, within kind of the the efficiencies of, of a, a you know the DC to DC. So nothing nothing weird going on there. But the reason why I'm making this video um, is because I actually liked this so much, I actually decided to buy a second one, uh, but not to use as a power bank. I actually bought it. Uh, to tear it apart and to steal the cells from it. Because of course, this thing um, just sort of screams 18650, right? I mean, given the shape and the size, let's see, uh, oh, I've got one of these really torn up cells here. Um, you can see it's the perfect size for six 18650s, right? And if you look at the capacity and you work it out, um, the 20.1 amp hours, that works to 3350 milliamp hours per cell if there were six 18650s in here. And that seems, I mean, that's a valid capacity. So anyway, I bought another one and I took it apart. And this is actually what's inside one of these things. And uh, if anyone wants to tear theirs, a, theirs apart, you should know right away, this is a one-way teardown. And the reason why I say that is because this thing, whoops, this thing is uh, designed to never come apart. Uh, it's not glued really or anything. I mean, the cells are glued down but they have positioned the clips in such a way that you really can't get into this without completely mangling it. Um, I mean, this was one of the most difficult things to take apart I have seen in at least the last year. Um, basically, it's normally when you take stuff apart, you know, you pop a single clip and then everything sort of kind of comes with it. But this, every single clip was holding on for dear life. Um, and it was just, it was just not something you can take apart without breaking. But again, that's why I bought two. I wanna keep this one to use and I'm gonna tear this, and of course I'm torn this one apart. Um, inside, it's uh, pretty pretty standard plastic. Um, they've got some nice light pipes with actual guides and stuff um, to uh, sort of prevent light from leaking. So they've taken some attention to detail there. The date marking is interesting. Um, this shows it was actually manufactured last month. So this thing was manufactured and sold within uh, within a, a one or two month period. So that's a, a you know this thing has not been sitting on a shelf. So they're actually selling these relatively quickly. But enough of the case, of course. What we want to see is the actual uh, the actual electronics. Now the the cells are really what I wanted out of this because uh, my laptop battery is failing and it's an older laptop. It's about four years old. And I don't use a laptop enough to really warrant me buying a new, a, a whole new laptop. And the, the, the batteries themselves are about $175 new. Um, you can get the sort of like the cheap knockoff ones for, uh, you know, 100 or so, but those are kind of sketchy and they're also a lot less capacity than the original OEM batteries. So if I could, you know, buy, buy this thing for, you know, 35 bucks, tear out the cells and put these cells in my, in, you know, in the, the holder for the, the laptop uh, cells, then I can effectively just rebuild myself a battery for you know 35 bucks, and uh, especially given the fact that these cells are bigger than uh, the cells in my laptop. My laptop cells are 2,600 milliamp hours, and these cells are actually 3,400 milliamp hours. So that's about a 30% increase in total battery capacity. So uh, that's that's also nice. Uh, these cells are uh, made by Panasonic, which is uh, I believe they're actually the world's largest battery manufacturer. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they are. Um, they have, I think, exclusive contracts with companies like Tesla for their motor vehicle, stuff like that. Um, this is the NCR 18650B, which is a 3400 milliamp hour 
uh, lithium ion cell. And of course there are six of them. They're wear, uh, wired in two sets of three in parallel in series. And uh, this does have a balanced charging lead here in the center. So that's good to see. And of course so the, the total pack voltage is 18.4 volts when fully charged. And uh, it's actually not that badly constructed. I, I have to say from some of the charges I've torn down, um, some of the ones you haven't seen that I just never bothered to film, this is actually not that bad. Um, I, I would be totally okay with using this. So now, now that I've taken this apart, I feel a lot better about using this. Um, the specs on this thing are, are, are quite nice and uh, they definitely appear to have the circuitry to back it up. So as for the, the packaging, like I said, the case is very well built. Um, it's very, very solid. They've put uh, sort of that foam across the welds on the back uh, in the center and on this side. So that's nice. They've heat shrunk and it appears they've crimped the, uh, the connections to the tabs on the end. And uh, in case you're wondering why this is kind of loose on the end, I actually did crack one of the tabs. I cracked one of the welds. Um, or sorry, not one of the welds, I actually sheared one of the tabs off. But uh, this was done by me when I was taking it apart. Uh, it was not like this uh, before. And I know that because I measured the cell voltages for both halves of this, and they're identical. And the only way that's possible is if it was intact when I charged it when I bought it. So uh, I did that damage that was not there from uh, from the beginning. Oh, you can see all the little, uh, all the black gunk coming off these cells, because what, that's what they used to adhere it in. So uh, that's kind of the, the worst part of getting this is you have to just kind of scrape it off, but it comes off. It's, it, it, it's not a big deal. You know, it's kind of what, the price you pay for $35 replacement cells, right? Because as far as I know, these cells cost more than this entire power bank did if I were to buy these cells individually. Um, at least from the numbers that I've got. So, and the other thing is, you know that these are probably valid cells. They're probably uh, not fakes or anything like that. Whereas uh, so many cells you buy now are fake. It's just, I just don't want to shop for individual cells knowing that there's just so much corruption in that market. Uh, but anyway, the controller, um, everything, of course, everything's on one board here. Uh, the main controller here is uh, kind of no surprise. It's made by a uh, whole tech. Um, they seem to have uh, a lot of a lot of parts for things like multimeters, power banks. They, they've really kind of got that market cornered. This is a Holtec HT sixty six F 18 eight, and uh, that is an eight bit uh, just an eight bit microcontroller, um, pretty standard uh, clock speeds up to twenty megahertz. But they're probably not doing that. They're probably using some sort of uh, internal. Uh, oscillator. This thing I think has a 32 kilohertz internal oscillator, so they're probably running it at that. And the reason why I think that is because if you actually press the the button to make the LEDs light up, you probably can't see this very well, but I can see it. They have a very low PWM frequency, um, like low enough that you, if, if it's not perfectly still, you can see it. Of course, the camera frame rate is going to mess with this, but uh, if it's not perfectly still, you can see it pulsing. Um, so obviously they don't have uh, many spare instruction cycles, so that they might they might be doing this with a low a low uh, frequency oscillator. And it, I don't see a crystal on this board, so I would assume they're probably using the internal for that. Um, just a whole bunch of SOT twenty three transistors and other assorted things. We have two parts here. Um, this one is made by I believe it says Tech Node or Tech Code. I can't quite read that. Let me see if I can get my magnifying glass out. This part right here by my thumb, that is completely unreadable. Um, I have no hope of seeing what that is. But the other part is a tech code TD1720. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure what that is. That probably is a DC to DC or a LiPo charging controller. That would be my guess because uh, of course on this side, we have another another device here, which is also unreadable, and of course these are obviously our uh, our MOSFETs for uh, uh, cell protection. So we have a protection diode there. So one of these would be the charge controller, and one of these would be the um, uh, the DC to DC step down converter, because uh, of course this uses a buck converter, a buck regulator, and that's what uh, this inductor here would be, would be for. Uh, we would have a a boost converter for charging and a buck converter uh, for discharging. Um, this thing will charge at up to two, two amps and it will discharge at up to 4.8 amps. So you can run two 2.4 amp loads on this 
simultaneously. Uh, and it does actually handle that very well, that the voltage stays above five volts, it doesn't droop or anything like that. So um, it, it actually can do things quite commendably and I believe it's probably due to the uh, quite large inductor that they have here. Um, the caps are branded Aishi. I've seen this brand before. Um, I can't speak for their reliability, but uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put too much on the caps in this because they're probably not doing that much. Um, it's this isn't an environment where they're going to get incredibly hot or anything like that. So, I mean, they'll get warm, but not that bad. So, uh, I, I'm not too worried about this. It's not like Capson or Samsung or Suscon or one of those horrible, horrible cap manufacturers. Um, everything in here is Celastic down. This is truly proper Celastic. Uh, both of the caps are totally solid. The inductor is Celastic down. They've got it around the connections here uh, for a little bit of strain relief against vibration. They've also got it around the, uh, the USB micro B um, connector and this little inductor here. So um, they seem to have uh, done their job here. Nothing on the big connectors, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother to put it on those because those are very large connectors and they do go through hole. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think it's a, I think it's a decent board. This is, of course, of course, it's just screwed in with two small screws into a one half of the case. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's not much else to say about this. Uh, it is just some batteries and a DC to DC, but it's, uh, it's decent from what I see and it's got some decent cells in it. So, like I said, I'm going to take these cells out and I'm going to put them into my laptop and... Uh, basically, I'm just going to condition them, uh, charge them all the way up, discharge them um, all the way down, and do this a couple times to try and train the uh, LiPo controller in my laptop um, to handle the, the new capacity of these cells. Of course, it's going to be jumping from the really low capacity of the cells that are in there to these, which are uh, much higher. And uh, the, the, basically, the way that the charge controllers work is they've got a Coulomb counter in them um, that basically counts up uh, it looks at the current uh, outflow or inflow, and it, it counts bu basically bundles of electricity. I mean, that's what a coulomb is, uh, right? One amp is one coulomb per second, and it counts that, and it tries to, you know, it tries to know how much the capacity of the batteries are, and therefore um, you can work with a percentage, and it uses a, a voltage curve as well. And uh, of course, the voltage curve when you put the big cells in, the voltage curve is going to differ from what the Coulomb counter says, and you've got to kind of recalibrate the Coulomb counter. So it takes a few cycles to do that. And uh, I usually like to run it all the way down to the point where the laptop shuts off, where it thinks it has no energy left. And then I just put it into the BIOS or something where it'll just sit there and, you know, it'll sit there forever until the cells actually run out of power and, you know, under voltage protection kicks in. And uh, at that point, then you can recharge it in the laptop rather than charge it in this. And uh, it will, uh, learn at that point uh, what the new capacity is. You can also put these uh, these in uh, low current um, power tools. You'd have to look at the data sheet. The data sheet for these is available online. Um, you can look at that and find out what their max discharge capacity is. And uh, you could put these in uh, some low current power tools if you wanted to as well. Anything that uses 18650s, uh, you could uh, use these for. Uh, 